let's go ahead and take a look at what our run of show is for today. Yep, we've got a great one lined up. We're going to be joined by our buds, Steph and Justin, to walk you through our year nine, which is a crazy number, <laughs> year nine content and design roadmap. And then after that, Senior Product Manager Derek is going to join us to talk about upcoming gameplay and quality of life improvements coming to the game, including one that you're not uh. going to want to miss. Yes, Whoa. and then we'll have Whoa. Dave and Janet oh, here to reveal everything early. coming with the latest chapter for Dead by Daylight. Then we're going to have some updates about the other projects we've got in the world fucking of DVD, early. that being the casting of Frank Stone by Supermassive and an unnamed multiplayer PvE game by Midwinter. Then we'll have Justin, a completely different <laughs> Justin from the one Eric talked about, um, <laughs> coming in to break down this year's in-game shenanigans for the anniversary. And last, we'll have so close. our Q&A, uh, which, once again, drop your questions in the chat so we can answer as Hi. many as possible. And who knows, we might have some other little surprises. Aaron? And while you're dropping your questions, we thought we would drop some content <laughs> on uh, you. Uh, like that? Yeah, I like that. <laughs> I just made that up. Twitch drops are back. So if you've watched our streams before, we like to offer Twitch drops to our viewers, and, and uh, today is no exception. So they're live right now, uh, and uh, you can get them by connecting your behavior account to your Twitch account. So there should be a oh, QR AK. code you can see. There should yeah. be links in the Twitch chat to jump over and get that hooked up if Woke you're up. not already. Okay. Yes, and if you're new to Twitch Drops with Dead by Daylight, all you need to know is that by watching any Dead by Daylight stream in the Twitch directory, you'll be accruing watch time, which will allow you to claim three of the Twitch Drops we have active today until May 28th. The first one, if you've already been with us since the start of our stream, you're already on your way to claiming, which is going to be the Totem in-game badge. Oh. And then after this, if you watch any other Dead by Daylight stream, uh, for people, four Bob. hours, you'll get the four Crimson hours. Hue in-game banner. And then lastly, for eight years, eight, eight uh, years, watching by the time, way. Yep. Uh, you'll be able to get the Greenville, Welcome to Greenville in-game banner. Yep. So Hi, enjoy Chloe. those drops. But uh, we mentioned surprises and... Uh, We've got one okay. to kick the show off with. So the first of which is actually a new game. Oh my God, what? <laughs> what the? We've, we've got a game too? that we haven't told anybody about yet. Uh, it's from the world of Dead by Daylight. Uh, we're gonna share it with you right now. It features some familiar faces. And most importantly, it is super duper fun. Love Neo. And I think you'll be Love surprised. So want, let's take a look. Jack, can you hear everything? You want me to turn it up or is it good? New volume? <laughs> he resharked it. No! False. <laughs> well, you've done it now, Dwight. You just had to touch the first board game. Now, you and your friend are trapped in our world, and danger is everywhere. Is but this? don't despair. Use your new magic abilities against the swarms of monsters that want you dead. Run, jump, and shoot to collect blood points to repair generators, increasing your this powers world of along the way. Unlock the door to escape together. <laughs> Why is this so cute? Kind of cute. It's not over yet. Use spells to keep your friend alive this until a they game? can revive you. Do you and your friend have what it takes to survive? Ponder this as you ask yourselves, What the fuck? Is somebody said in chat, is this the new Unreal Engine update? <laughs> Oh my god, that song is so earwormy. It's gonna get stuck in my head. It, the game itself is like the guitar solo of video games. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I'm already gonna walk away and just. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> yes, you saw that correctly. What the Fog is now available. And it's not only that, but it's free for current behavior account holders and new subscribers. Um, but we do have a limit of free keys. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you make your behavior account after the stream, of course, or in another tab. Just don't leave. <laughs> um, but go ahead and grab that, claim it on your account, and if you're unable to, um, then you're able to get it on Steam, which is exclusively oh. on Steam for $4.99 USD. Yep, Only five and bucks. Uh, as you might expect with the drops, now a free game. A lot of people watching the stream. There oh. might be some load on our uh, on our behavior <laughs> login system. So if there Green. is, bear with us. Yeah, we will we'll get, get you it. in the door. And don't worry, you'll get the game. Uh, so as you might have been able to tell from that trailer, what the fog 
which is just the best title, <laughs> uh, is a two-person co-op roguelite, uh, the simple goal of surviving and escaping with each increasingly difficult level. So to do that, you go head-to-head -head with swarms of monsters and bosses, and as we mentioned, lots of heavy metal guitar. <laughs> yes. So Eric and I got to play it um, before launch, and honestly, it was so crazy fun. Like, I had that song stuck in my head for <laughs> weeks. But uh, you need to make sure that you get your hands on it so that you can have fun, survive, and then get the fog out. We nice. ain't kids. So like. that out of the way. See, you weren't expecting that. I like you. Give me the game. Uh, uh, meat spin. We're going to dive into the show. So we're going to hand All things over to Stefan bombing. and Justin to talk about Dead by Daylight's Year 9 Roadmap. Lunch. I have uh, alerts muted at the. Thank you. Why is Undreamt awake? DVD just shittier? No, it's just like a little fun co op for free to play or $5 roll. Like, you just kill monsters. It's like an arcade game. Let's be honest. Can I get a can I get a show of hands? A little raise of hands. Who's surprised I'm actually awake? The Meekins. I'll raise my hand. Go get. I'm to drink. I'm gonna be like cranky and tired until. Forty-two thousand viewers. Thank you for Good joining game. us. It's great to be back with you, celebrating Dead by Daylight's eighth year anniversary. I'm Stefan Beauchamp, head of production. And I am Justin oh. Brown, product director. That's really excited to be true. here with you today to talk a little bit about Dead by Daylight's year nine roadmap. I'm going to take a second here at the top of the show to give a big, big shout out to our absolutely phenomenal team that's working on the game day in, day out. Yeah, they are the reason we are here with you today and celebrate <laughs> eight amazing years of Dead by Daylight. Sleeping. Before going any further, I just want to address something that's probably going to get talked about quite a bit in, in the chats across different uh, the different channels. Uh, we know since the last uh, the last update, there's been a rubber bending issue that's been plaguing the game. The team has been working extremely hard at it over the last few few weeks. We have a tentative fix that the team has been working on that we're hoping to test on the PTB later today. If everything is successful with that, we will be deploying that fix to live, and hopefully it should improve the situation. But it's still to be confirmed. So keep up, uh, keep keep an eye on our channels for that. We'll keep you all posted. Paula, I think some. Twitch sent out Moving an email or a note. The future Check a little Twitter. bit. Twitter. The coming year for Dead by Daylight is going to be huge, and that's saying something coming off of our biggest year to, the, to date. Uh, since the last anniversary, <laughs> we have released bestie. amazing licensed content such as Alien, Chucky, Alan Wake, and a personal favorite of mine, Nick Cage, such an amazing addition to the game. On top of that, we've also released our most popular Good original chat, chapter on. to date, All Things Wicked. Of course, and we can't forget, we did the Halloween event, which was bigger and better than ever with the introduction of The Void. This year, we introduced the concept of modifiers in Dead by Daylight, starting in February with uh, Lights Out. We followed it with My Little Oni, and soon, later this week, we'll introduce Chaos Shuffle, the third one. We took a few steps towards improving the player experience uh, between anti-face camp, blood web UX improvements, uh, the killer FOV slider, survivor DC bots, Thank and you. even the search bar. I want to show you. Uh, so there's a lot there. Uh, and finally, we've taken a few big steps towards increasing our transparency, our communication with regular live streams on each of our content releases thus far. Enough talking about the past. Let's dive into the future and what's really what, coming up commented? for this year. We're happy to announce today Wait, I didn't that even we have see. six new chapters oh, currently in the taste. works. And two of those chapters will be survivor-only chapters for this year. Really? On top two of, of that, them? we'll have the usual four new tomes that are going to be coming out spread throughout the year. <laughs> As we talked a little bit and teased even earlier last the week, dick. the first chapter that's going to be coming out is Dungeons and Dragons. And we're yep. actually going to deep dive that in a soon to come segment right uh, shortly after All this. All right, let's uh, keep going. One. And it really promises to bring Dungeons great and game Dragons. Great new characters to the world of Dead Wait, by Daylight. Can't wait. Of course, and we're going to follow that with a licensed survivor, a character who truly oh. embodies the meaning of that word. After that, an iconic killer survivor duel will be coming into the fog, and if you stick around to the end of the show, oh. you're going to get a little uh, preview as to what that will be. So we'll finish off 2024 with an original killer and survivor chapter, and we'll finish off the year nine roadmap with 
a licensed killer only chapter followed by an original survivor only there's like what is that, like stuff four coming or five out licensed licensed chapters moving a bit away from our content roadmap um, we're going to take a closer look at the four pillars out of which the the, the year will be uh, based on it's for those Ariana of you who have been Grande. with us for a long time, you'll see Lucy that there's so consistency happy. throughout the years with the four pillars that we're focusing on, but we're really adjusting the contents of each so that we're working on the features that have the most value and the most interest to all of our players in ways where we can expand the game further and further. Of course, and we're going to start off with the trust and security pillar. Uh, firstly, we're thrilled with the response to our regular broadcasts, uh, and we're really happy to let you know you can fully expect more to come as we progress uh, throughout the year, accompanying all of our major releases. Security is a topic we rarely talk about publicly uh, for good reason. Uh, but one thing I will inform you all of is last year we set out to start tackling this AFK box you know, there's so many perks see, in this. Uh, especially in some regions of the game. Phase one had very promising we'll find a way results, to keep things and we're fresh. certainly going to be uh, taking that forward another step into phase two in the coming year. Our next two pillars, live balance and quality of Yo, life, we won't la discuss la. too much. Of Thank course, you can expect regular right. live balance updates throughout the year and new quality of life. But my friend and colleague Derek will be coming up in the gameplay improvement segment to cover more on that topic, including uh, an announcement on one of the most highly requested features ever in Dead by Daylight. Oh. This one's going to be really, really exciting. Stay tuned for that because that is really something oh. interesting coming up. Wait, Last what is it? Last not least, our fourth pillar, events evolution. Events have always been Proximity a chair? fundamental part of the game, especially the seasonal events. Uh, and this is something we're going to keep pushing forward over the coming year. Uh, with, with this year, we're starting to, well, we to do a bit of a split where uh, we're, we're going to have our events happening on a separate matchmaking queue, which essentially means that at any time there's an event ongoing, you can decide to still play normal Dead by Daylight, if Wait, that's what you're looking for. Really? But you can also go into the event-specific queue and play some of that gameplay. <laughs> This is really going to allow us huh. to push gameplay further and further away from the typical way that By Daylight normally works. And it's going to be a very interesting way for us to approach events in a different way. Weird. On top of that, we can also expect uh, more modifiers to make it in the game, well. whether it's the one we've talked about just before that are going to be re revisited throughout the year or inter uh, in introducing new modifiers that are uh, uh, either tweaks on something or something mm. completely different. But we're a long way from a little sliver casual, of what we're planning to do this year, and I think we have something a little bigger that might be coming up. Uh, Absolutely, and that's why I'm so happy to yeah, be here. Exactly. And let why you guys would you not know play that the For event? the first time ever, this summer, Dead by Daylight will have a new mode, not modifier, but a mode coming to you all. We've been listening and hearing your feedback, and I'm really happy to let you know that this summer, replacing Scorching Barbecue will be the first ever time limited 2v8 mode in Dead by Daylight. Wow. We'll be doing a full breakdown of what this mode We're is when we get closer that. to the release. We're actually for doing now, a 2v8. I'm going to thank my friend okay. Stefan for joining me. Invite right. my friend Matt to the couch to talk a little bit more about this. And here's a snippet of what's okay. to come. That's kind of big. Oh my god. Why do I have a feeling like this is just going to break the game? <laughs> Skull Merchant Night Duos. Battle of the AI. Let me see it. A lot of survivors. Oh, weird. They're actually doing a 2v8. What the shit? You were up, Brown. Huh. Boom. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Oh! Well, I know it's still early and everything is we subject went to change. From a, a ginger guy? I think it's going to be really fun to sort of guy. let the community in on some of our plans for this upcoming 2v8 introduction. Absolutely. Thanks, Justin. So yeah, 2v8 is coming to DVD. This is a new game mode, which is really cool. Other gameplay events that we've done before, so Lights Out, My Little Oni, soon Chaos Shuffle, these are what we're calling modifiers. And modifiers basically take a DVD match, change a few things, but ultimately what you're the still fog? playing DVD. How did they do that? With this new game mode, 2v8, we're fundamentally changing the way that you play Dead by Daylight. In this particular case, there's two killers, eight survivors, and a bunch of new changes that we're going to get into very shortly. The focus with 2v8, we really wanted to hone in on what's exciting and fun and chaotic with DBD, and we're leaning more into a party mode kind of vibe rather than something that's super competitive. 
It's also worth mentioning that Even the way that we're building this, play. it's an iterative process, right? And this is just the first iteration. So we'll be looking to add more content, more gameplay in the future based on community feedback. <laughs> Absolutely, and I'm super excited to see what everybody says right about this mode when it comes out. So first, let's break down a few of the key changes that we know are going to be coming for 2v8 this summer. I mean, of course, there's still generators, there's still exit gates, there's just more of them. Uh, we've made five maps bigger to accommodate all of the action, all of the chaos. Survivor uh, buff! And we're also doing away with perks in this mode. Instead, introducing That's... a new sort of 2v8 exclusive system called Classes for Survivors? That's right. Yeah, so when it comes to Survivors, Basically, once you've chosen your character, you can select and equip a player class. And this class is effectively your power for the match, and it helps players identify what mm. your role is within the team. So instead of mixing and matching perks, instead we really wanted to focus on a particular playstyle for this, and uh, whether it's generator repair, healing, uh, looping, speed, that kind of thing, that's what we're really going for with these classes. Of course, and there's also just cowering in the corner, which Absolutely. is my own preferred play style for Survivor, uh, which is great. Uh, and it'll work a little differently for killers. Uh, you'll be able to choose from one of the five original killers, each with their own specific gameplay. Killers obviously have power, so they don't have classes in this mode, but we will be introducing a new mechanic, which is a team power. For example, if you are the Wraith, uh, when you cloak yourself, if your teammate is within a certain radius of you, uh, they will also get the undetectable status effect, allowing you to coordinate a sort cool. of team stealth attack. Should make for some entertainment. Huh. Uh, the reason that we're focusing on the five original killers is just to make sure that this is as accessible as possible. They're all free. Everybody can play them. Everybody can have fun. We want you to enjoy the content and give us your feedback. And in my opinion, the best part of this whole mode Eight is survivors. the two. It's the, the first time ever that success and failure as a killer does not rely solely on your shoulders. You have a teammate to sort of benefit from, learn from, or even, you know, blame uh, when things <laughs> go poorly. So working together is just going to make the match so much more fun, so much more efficient. Absolutely. Uh, lastly, it's worth mentioning that uh, for this mode, we really wanted to keep the action pace and the momentum flowing. Uh, during our play tests, uh, we found that the process of downing a survivor picking them up, carrying them to the hook, it really started to slow things down for this mode in particular. So we're doing away with hooks as well. There's no hooks in 2v8. There's no Instead, Michael. It's once just the, the original down five. The survivor, they'll be able to send them to a cage. This works very similar to Pyramid Head. It will teleport the survivor to another part of the map, away from the killers. And of course, this still counts as hook states. So once you've been hooked three times, you'll be out of the match. You're out. And as Justin said before, there will be five original killers coming to this iteration of this game mode, but we will be looking to add more as we iterate on there it and go. add more to it. Uh, of course, we'll also be uh, improving the game as it goes along. So content uh, will be coming in as well as updates to classes and gameplay. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining me, Matt. And to all of you at home, if you want to learn more about 2v8, please join us in our July live stream. We will hope you're looking forward to this year nine. For now, I wasn't to expecting you, to get out of bed this early, so that makes two of us. It'll be like no perks, all original characters. Quick recap, uh, Dungeons and Dragons confirmed, uh, two single, uh, solo survivor chapters here, um, a lot of licensed content, um, 2v8 oh my mode. God. That road map. Great segment. Great beard, Stefan. People were loving the wet <laughs> beard in chat. Uh, but the real story, 2v8. 2v8, yes. I cannot wait to dodge hatchets and chainsaws at the same time. Oh, there's also a free game I can't you can wait get for our killers to finally have friends again. that they can yeah. play with. Get some friends in the fog. Forge friendships in the fog. <laughs> but uh, that was a great segment to watch. I loved the reactions in chat. Uh, I think the guys did a really good job of explaining this is a first iteration, and there's going to be a lot of changes based on community feedback. So that's why we're not just flipping the switch and making it permanent all of a sudden. You need to actually get the mode where we want it. But we're using the word mode, which means a lot. So pay attention. Uh, and speaking of paying attention, uh, the website 
That's, that's a transition that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but the website for What the Fog uh, has been overwhelmed by demand, uh, as, as predicted. People love that cute little game. Uh, so Pretty we're working cute. on it. Stay tuned. Don't worry. Oh, we have lots and lots it. of keys uh, for it. So uh, just uh, as soon as we're able to tell you it's back up, we'll give you a mention on the stream here or in the chat. Nice. Yeah. We definitely know you guys want to get your hands on it. But what we can do is tell you about something you can get your hands on today. Yes. And so the recently, I think it was December, we released three DLC packs. They're called Maddening Darkness, Old Wounds, and Macabre Tales. That was a way for players to get a big bunch of our older content all in one or three goes. <laughs> uh, It'll be a and mode so or not. we're actually going to be it doing that again. Yeah. So barbecue. this pack is actually going to pick up exactly where the left, last one left off, which is going to be the Endless Hunt pack. Um, and in this pack, um, you're going to get nine playable characters, um, starting with Portrait of Murder, Roots of Dread, uh, Forge in the Fog, and Tools of Torment. And along with these, this pack is going to be all the additional outfits and DLC exclusive of items. Um, but of course, if you don't want to get the pack, they will be individually marked down in the in-game store so Fired. you can get them there. Yes, so that Endless Hunt pack is actually available right now. It is the best way, especially if you're a newer player to Dead by Daylight, to get a big bunch of great content. So that out of the way, we're going to keep the train rolling. Next up, we're going to be welcoming Derek right where you're sitting. He's going to tell us all about game, game play improvements and quality of life improvements coming to Dead by Daylight, including a very big one that people have requested for ages. What is so it? Let's talk to Derek. What is it? What's a good gameplay improvement? Is it just seeing your teammates' perks? How about like an auto blood point Back spender? everybody and welcome Derek you can crush to our stream items. for the first time. Uh, Derek points. is from our product management team. He works with the dev team on creating all sorts of cool quality of life updates, gameplay updates, and he's here to tell you about some good ones today. Derek, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm Diffie, pretty I don't know if good. it works like that. It's going to be even better after this segment when we hear <laughs> what you Loop. get to say. Um, so I already know what you get to say, but I think people are going to be excited to hear about it. The upcoming challenge system. This isn't something we've told people about. Why don't you tell them about it right now? How is it going to benefit our players? So we really wanted to deliver new in-game challenges to players and new ways for them to be constantly rewarded outside of just tomes and archives. So we're going to be introducing a new challenge system, which is a system of challenges, hence Autos. the name, Perfect. that players are going to be able to complete completely passively. That means that players don't need to actively select the challenge that they want to complete and they can complete multiple of them at but the rat. same time. Initially, we're going to start with daily challenges, weekly challenges, and event challenges. And okay. later on, we want to expand those into other parts of the game as well. We think that this is going to be a great way for players to be constantly rewarded just for logging in and playing DVD. And it's going to be an amazing experience for everybody. I think that's a really great addition. I think people mm -hmm. in the community are going to really appreciate just being rewarded for doing what they already do. <laughs> Wait, is that do. what they said? Uh, not having to go out and a seek A new it, challenge just, system it's, it's that is a system of challenges? Times. They really say that? Great. Um, ah. So another great thing that we're adding nice. actually is how we talk to our players. Mm -hmm. um, that's the main job of my team is talking and listening to our players. Uh, but we do it out in the world. We do it on social media. Yep. We do it on TikTok and Twitter and other places. Uh, but in-game is obviously the best place mm -hmm. to talk to people, and you've got some updates there. Yeah, we're here to make the players' lives easier and your life easier as well. So we're going to be introducing a new inbox-based system that will help connect players with the news that you have to announce, including patch notes, announcements, rewards, and a lot more. That way, players I already will don't see read less pop-ups when they launched into the game, and they'll be able to get into their games quicker. And overall, the players will be able to stay connected with the world of DVD and the news that you have to announce. Yeah, and it gives us new tools, right? Like mm. being able to tell people the, the patch notes in detail is something we couldn't do before, and now we can. So again, you don't have to go find it on the web, but you'll be able to get it in the game. Uh, pop-ups, uh, uh, not pop-ups, but notifications for mm. rewards as well is another yes. great improvement. So really good work there by the team. Uh, but we're not done. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, this is something people are familiar with, the Finisher Mori system. We tested it out a while back in PTB, got a ton of great feedback from the community. Mm -hmm. uh, the team took that feedback, went back to the shop to tinker with it, and we've got the final version to tell people mm -hmm. about now. Right. Um, I love Finisher Moris. I think oh they're God. a really amazing showcase for how deadly and gruesome our killers can be. But we also acknowledge that there was some oh room God. for improvement from the survivor's perspective. So like you said, we've taken the feedback, we've reiterated on it, and tried to land on what was the best player experience. So in a coming update, 
finisher mores are going to become a baseline feature for cool. all killers in the game. That means that killers are going to have access to the killer finisher mores by default, but they're only going to be able to use them on the last remaining survivor. Thank God. That way, if the killer is able to su God. successfully pull it off, we get an exciting conclusion to the match, and the survivors can feel that the game's ended in a fair way and the move went and this match went smoothly and it was a really exciting experience for everybody. Mori offerings are also going to be updated to instead give bonus blood points so that it'll be a more rewarding experience for killers if they're able to pull it off. So the killer's going to want to land that at mm -hmm. the end. Yes. It happens at the end, like you said, so we're not killing the flow of the match. I think it's a really great balance from where we started and the feedback that we got. So kudos to you and the team. Mm -hmm. It felt like it and took them a couple of years to And that's all from you today. Unfortunately, that's all you have they to had go, to do. But the show is far Just from over. Just add it to the last Next survivor. Up, we're going to hear about the new chapter coming to Dead by Daylight. Uh, so stay tuned, everybody. And thank you, Derek, for I your mean, time. I mean, assuming... Thank you for having me. No, I mean, it should be fine. If there's only one survivor remaining in the trial, who cares about a Mori system? That was the whole point to begin with. Give every killer baseline a way to Mori every single game, but don't make it to the point where it entices people to poor man slug. They actually learned. It only took them five and a half years. I'm already so excited for the challenges and the finisher, Mori. I, I just want to shout out Derek for dropping so casually such a highly anticipated... <laughs> Wait, is that what they wanted? Is that yes, what cross progression is finally coming. Super excited. What? And it's another reason for you to make your behavior account. So not only will you be able to get What the Fog for free, We're but you also cross progression be yourself for again? cross progression. <laughs> um, which we know that's something, you know, you're once again going to have to be waiting to get your hands on. Um, but we can now talk about merch, which you can get your hands on yep. right now. Wait, did um, they just casually so drop the cross merch store, progression? We've got the always popular mystery boxes coming back for this anniversary um and obviously because of the name i can't tell you what's in the box um maybe i'll try you know but uh, anyway <laughs> um in the boxes you're gonna see oh, four they did? um very exclusive dbd items specifically for this release um it's also going to include an art print um where some of them are actually signed by our credit creative director dave richard which is pretty amazing. I had Dave sign my chest backstage. I oh. won't be sharing that to <laughs> save you all, but he's got a great signature, one of the best. Good flex. Uh, it's a really cool uh, piece too. If you haven't gotten a mystery box in the past, it's always just a fun. It's a fun unboxing process. So, follow the QR code on screen, scan it, and go get it. But we also have an update to the DVD board game. Oh, yeah, How you're much right. Uh, there's no going to be an expansion pack for the Dead by Daylight, the board game. Um, and this is going to be called the Malicious Expansion. Uh, this comes with three new killers, the Artist, the Dredge, and the Knight, and four new survivors, uh, Michaela, Jonah, Hattie, and Vittorio. Um, it's also going to come with two new maps, um, which is going to be the Garden of Joy and the Forsaken Boneyard. That's super exciting, and I'm so happy to see the success of the board game. I'm such a tabletop nerd that yeah. uh, it's just such good quality, and I'm glad that people are resonating with it. So shout out to level99games.com, which is where you want to go to pre-order it. You'll get it later this summer. Uh, all obviously, the DVD merch shop as well is available. You can open it up on your Ooh, phone with that review. QR code. You can go to another tab and get some shiny, shiny stuff. No, yeah, I don't so play games. It's really nice, especially like you said in the summer. You know, play it outside, touch some grass at the same time. <laughs> um, so play a board other game than outside. That, uh, if you have any questions about the content we've been dropping so far, because it's been a lot of content, oh. uh, we will have our live Q and A segment at the end of the stream. So make sure you're dropping your questions into the chat. But other than that, roll initiative, because it's time to talk about Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I see what they did there. Poor misguided wanderer. First, there were many, and now, so few. Fuck you, dude! How little you must value your lives to take a single insignificant breath. Dude, the skins would actually go hard, though, right? In a D&D &D chapter, the skin would go hard. The skins would go insane. There will be no quick death. Character better be a hot little elf. I shall draw out your ending as I see fit. For in dark places, 
I put that back. Third, baby. Yo, what up, Jay? I'm Mathieu Côté, Head of Partnerships for Behavior Digital, and I'm extremely happy to be joined here today by <laughs> Sean Thanos from our friends like. at Wizard of the Coast, uh, who is going to be with me talking about what we just saw. Hi, Sean. Hey, Matthew. Marvel, Good really? Pleasure. Uh, we just saw the trailer here. I still have goosebumps. This is so amazing. Like uh, I was saying earlier, I have... Uh, inner child in me that's thrilled right now i've been playing dungeons and dragons since i'm like, yeah the 10 ptb years old, is usually at the end of stream an absolute dream come true so thank you so much for being a part of that of course yeah my pleasure i, I you know 10 year old sean wakes up every day <laughs> realizing that he works at wizards of the coast dream yeah. job so we're, we're super aligned on that so dungeons and dragons is probably one of the the biggest gateways that people have had to how to craft stories how to design games how to create experiences for other people uh we've seen it of course within the dev team there's so many people who've got their first taste of designing games through dungeon and dragons have you <laughs> seen this to be true one out of ten trailer developers that that's all right with? oh absolutely yeah i always say it's the the easiest thing about my job is i, I never have to teach people what dnd is or what the brand is about because when i'm working with the developer there's i guarantee you the person that i'm talking to has played and everybody on their team has played or at the very least is like very aware of, of what the game is and what it entails it makes it makes my job very very easy um you know i i, I always joke around dnd is kind of this like the building block or like the connective tissue between game designers you can be at a gaming convention and you're talking to other developers and if you have nothing else in common just start talking about D. &D. it's true it's kind of a common language there's so many common references there uh yeah. the, for me personally like i said it's a dream come true i still play dungeons and dragons every week with my group of friends i'm the forever dm in that group i've never and, played uh, i know that there are a couple of other people on my team who were absolutely thrilled to we're be done a part for of this. <laughs> What who knows? Maybe they'll do a little bit more RP than uh, to enter into our current community. Maybe uh, there'll be a bunch of meme lords. That's a great question. Uh, I think that exploring horror is always something that's really, really interested us. Um, Dungeons and Dragons has dipped its toes in in, in horror before. You know, we've got modules oh, it's like a lich. Strahd. We've got um, is a, a lich lot technically of, like a necromancer? Um, different horror elements we've brought together in some of our monsters. Um, obviously, characters like Vecna have have been super horror driven. So when the idea popped up on our radar, hey, you know, uh, what do you think about working together with behavior on a dead what by the daylight fuck module? is this um, comment, dude? It, like the light turned on instantly. Steve Harrington oiled up, was, please. But, there were no question you need marks. Jesus. Was exclamation points. It's like, how how do we do this the best? Right. Like, let's find the coolest character. Let's find the coolest setting. Let's let's really make this uh, a true sort of celebration of the inside okay. of Dead by Daylight and make it a way that feels super. Bro, I don't know. Native First message. Game. Yeah. And, and you mentioned horror. I mean, I know a lot of people will <laughs> probably think that their first thought when they think of Dungeons and Dragons is not necessarily horror, but there is quite a lot of potential for horror in there. I mean, it is a very flexible medium to tell stories. And horror stories are some of the stories that will provoke the most intense emotions and reactions in players. Oh, that's kind of cool. So for probably us, have it, good it mobility sense, skills yes. then in game. Yeah, I'm 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 also slightly Demo. in the forever dungeon master box that you are. <laughs> uh, I try to inject a little bit of horror into all the campaigns that I run. I think that it's just a great tool to use to tell stories. If your players never get scared, right, there's you're probably doing something a little bit wrong. True. Um, and like you mentioned, Dungeons and Dragons is just a really flexible system for telling stories. At the end of the day, the players and the dungeon masters, you're not fighting each other. You're just there telling a collaborative story about what happens. And horror is just a great tool to include in that box of storytelling. Um, I love Skull it's, Merchant. Yeah, it's, it's, and D&D &D hasn't always been, hey, we are a horror game. But the tools are there if you want to do it. And I think some of the best storytellers out there definitely yeah. implement those tools. Yeah, yeah. There are many examples out there. Now... Uh... 
why Vecna? I mean, we've seen it in the trailer. He is an absolute in the terrifying chat. presence. I think that whether you're Jason. a survivor or a killer and you play with Vecna in that game, it's going to be a chat. really, really intense experience. So tell me a little bit why Vecna and why it makes sense. Uh, for me, the main reason that Vecna was very clearly like on the top of the podium the entire time we were discussing potential killers is that Vecna has always had this horror movie monster vibe to him i mean as a lich he's always had the ability to you can even kill him and he just pops back up and will come back it, it might not be tomorrow yeah it might be a couple of years in the future but like vecna is always going to come back uh he just has this real inevitability to him right it, you you know it's and the thing about D D is very quickly in a D D setting yeah, your party it. becomes a group of powerful adventurers right you're you're defeating all these other monsters that you know like dragons and stuff and then yep. vecna shows up and you're like oh we need to run away vecna's here like he's he's such a scary is it i kind of want to watch stranger in the things universe just from the last his earliest season. appearances were just items with his name on them and everybody was wondering oh who's who's this actually guy looks vecna interesting. Got this eye and this and this hand and um it was just like whispers of this ancient evil that was so powerful you couldn't even print a stat block for him because he was just that strong. Yeah, it's the and terrifying Mercer? presence that Ooh, few talk about. That would be but sick. if you've heard about yeah. him, it's probably already too late. It's uh, it's true that it's got that absolute flavor and he is he has been part of the Dungeons and Dragons universe for Worth almost it? 50 years now, right? He was there at the very very beginning, like you said, as part of just DM, a note in come there. Come back in but he campaign. does have a stat block and and reading well, it that's is kind of cute. Is all it's not ridiculous, but it's it's so much power in those pages that you line. understand that he is like you said inevitable but also he is able to scare a party of level 15 adventurers who are technically almost unstoppable by that point right right yeah it's it's kind yeah, of yeah, fun. it's it's <laughs> it, it's it's always like i've lost quite a few pl uh, player characters myself to yep. vecna and you know eve of ruin we've got the new book coming out and as soon as you see vecna eve of ruin i was like oh looks like i'm gonna lose a couple more <laughs> yeah just... but that's part of the fun that's yeah. writing stories Old with your friends. Mac. so yeah. before we let uh Janik and dave take us through the the details of how we implemented vecna with the gameplay mechanics of dead by daylight how we presented them to Let's our players uh, i'm wondering if you have a message for the hardcore dnd fans out there who may not be familiar with dead by daylight yeah, I, I, I do actually. And it's uh, try this chapter out, even if you don't play it, like watch somebody stream it because this uh, this chapter, it's a love letter to Dungeons and Dragons from a very passionate and very talented team of developers of behavior. It was super obvious throughout the entire process mm. that, you know, from the sound design work to the animations and the modeling. I literally just can't bring like, myself even, to play D&D. Like, yeah, it's, I, I can't stress enough how easy it made the approvals process on our end that all of this work came in very obviously driven by an incredibly high level of passion for Dungeons oh, and yeah. Dragons. Um, if you are a D&D fan, there's really cool Easter eggs in the map. Uh, there's really cool Easter eggs all over the place. There's there's just a ton of a ton of love for D&D in this thing. And if you're a fan, there's, there's something in here for you, I promise. Even if, even if you don't think that horror is your thing, give it a try. It's super fun. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much for the kind words. Seriously, it means the world to me. Now, uh, I think we'll wrap this up for now. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today in our anniversary. And uh, I hopefully will see you in the fog. Right. That's not it, it though. That's just it for them. Are we getting something more or what? Not the Legion chasing me, by the way. Hey, hi. I'm not Dave. You're not Janik. I'm not Janik. No, we're uh, quickly interrupting our D&D &D segment. There's a lot more. Stay tuned. Dave will be right where I am in just a second uh, to give you an update on cross-progression. So 
This is a live show. We're having a live TV moment as we speak. Uh, so apologies, uh, you might have noticed, even though I was dressed the same. Our segment with Derek that was uh, just before uh, was pre-recorded, and in fact, we played the wrong one. <laughs> so we want to give you more details on pr cross progression here. So that's what we're going to do. So take it away, Dork. Yeah. So cross progression is hands down one of the most requested features every single stream, every single post. Drink. You guys are wanting cross progression, and we're giving it to have you fun. later this summer. Uh, players will need to own the base game on any platform that they're playing on and have a behavior account. I'm sure you heard me talking about cross regression with an account. And you're like, what is she talking about? Um, but uh, yeah, so make sure you have that and uh, you'll be able to use cross regression later this summer. We do understand that the website is currently down because so many people are trying to get to the website and make their account. Um, but we're working on it and we'll have this to use shortly. Yep. And just as a clarification, in case we have a few folks in chat that aren't aware, Dead by Day, this is cross progression for console and PC, Dead by Daylight. We're not talking about Dead by Daylight mobile. It's really its own experience if you've never played it. It's a different beast uh, from the Dead by Daylight exactly. core, as we call it internally. Um, awesome. So along with the Twitch drops and a chance to get What the Fog <laughs> for free, players now have another reason for their behavior account and another reason to crash our website. So uh, like we said, bear with us. The, the site will be brought back up and all this will happen. Um, regarding cross progression, though, any exceptions about uh, uh, in how the system is going to work? Well, while every platform will have cross progression, there will be a few exceptions of to what can be shared between those platforms. But stay tuned. We'll have a full FAQ coming very soon um, so that you can go ahead and learn more about cross progression for Dead by Daylight. Yep. So, and uh, as mentioned, now we're going to pass it to Dave and Janik for some great deep details on our Dungeons and Dragons chapter. Thank you, Dork, uh, Eric, for this uh, cross-progression information, just to prove that we are live. Um, so we're super excited uh, today to be able to talk about the Dungeon & Dragon chapter. I am Dave, creative director on Dead by Daylight, and I'm joined by my good friend, Janik. Hello, Janik Never, principal game designer on Dead by Daylight. Uh, today, I'll be talking about all the intricacy of the gameplay on this chapter. But first, I'll mention uh, Dead by Daylight, eight years uh, introducing the Dragon. Happen. It's a big milestone for us, but we're not the only one hitting a special milestone. Yeah, it's, it's cross crazy to think that shit, Dungeon & Dragon turns 50 this year. Uh, and we are super proud and happy to be part of the celebration. Um, and um, um, we just want to say that uh, maybe when we turn 50, we do something else with you, Wizard of the Coast. So goodbye, Andrew. Maybe undreamt. sooner. Yeah, we'll probably be in retired home, but yeah, we'll be glad to join the party. Uh, oh, so okay. first, uh, Dungeon Dragon in Dead by Daylight. I have to be honest here. Uh, the first time you told me about uh, what's going to uh, be uh, coming next, yeah. I was surprised because I'm a big horror fan. But when you think about horror, Dungeon Dragon is not the first thing that comes to mind. But thinking sure. about it more, I realized, no, wait, there's a lot of horror in Dungeon and Dragon. Sure. And rather enough being my favorite module. Uh, right. So... Uh, like you really specifically uh, focus on certain elements of the brand, uh, so please tell us about those pillars. Yeah. So when we start a chapter, we always uh, is this have Dave? a sandbox created. He's a so chat. We stay, um, you know, around He's some specific pillars, like, like you said. Um, and uh, of course, when we think Dungeon and Dragons, the first thing that comes to mind is a magical world, a high fantasy, magical creatures, wizards, magic, um, all sort of things that don't necessarily fit exactly well into a horror setting. But because D&D is a world of imagination where we can create whatever we want, uh, there's also a way to make it happen. So for us, the first pillar was to make sure that we had a good juxtaposition with fantasy, so fully embracing that type of content, but make it horrific as well. And like you've seen in the trailer, having a character like Vecna made yeah. perfectly sense for that horror setting. 
The second pillar is creative role playing. So in the image of Dungeon and Dragon, we wanted to make sure that players add a lot of agency, a lot of choices. Um, so that goes from uh, an, an amount of spells you can choose from in the power, which we'll talk about later, uh, or even customization. So a way you can you know, kind of create your own character in some way. Uh, we just wanted to make sure that we had a lot of gameplay choices uh, in the DBD trials. And the last pillar we worked with is chaos. So that's actually one of our main pillar in Dead by Daylight. Um, um, but, you know, a lot of what happens in Dungeon & Dragon is based on randomness. You throw a dice, and with, you know, critical success, critical fails, and everything in between, you see the result, and you adapt to it. So we wanted to recreate that feeling inside the Dead by Daylight trials as well. Yeah, Dungeon & Dragon is really about exploring a fantasy world, but also be thrill about what's going to be the monster you're going to meet the next time you open a door. So let's talk about that killer you'll meet the next time you open the door. So of course, Dungeons and Dragons has a lot of iconic monsters we could have chosen from. A lot of iconic villains like, as well. I like reading and chat. And with uh, our friends at Wizard of the Coast, we've established that our next killer will I be learned so Fekna. much about our community. Fekna is just a perfect fit uh, for Dead by Daylight. He's a lich, so a powerful wizard that um, turned himself into undead to be able to continue his uh, villainry. Is that even a word? I'm not sure. So now. Uh, he wanted to continue to do his horrible stuff uh, for as long as he could. He, Vecna also has uh, access to uh, every spell in the books. Uh, so that was very interesting for us to create an interesting power. See, look. Of course, we also have a survivor on pizza in the chapter. Is wicked work. Uh, so the bard, um, a very interesting class. There's many, many class that we could have chosen oh, okay. from. But the bard was really the one that fit the most into our horror setting. You know, for example, when we think uh, about a class like the paladin, um, you think of the ability to turn uh, the undead magical sword, um, Whoa! Big plated armors, um, and all of this oh. doesn't fit really well into the world of Dead by Daylight. The bard with abilities like bardic inspiration, the ability to sing, to play musical Yo, instruments, what's up, naked more, grandmas? Welcome uh, in. and even to insult the villain is just so on brand that it was a perfect fit. So that's why we chose the bard. Uh, as you've seen in the image and the trailer, we're doing something uh, special uh, with the survivor. Um, it's uh, akin to what we've done with Legion. So through the cosmetic customization, you'll be able to choose between two specific characters inside the same survivor. So you'll have the choice between Ice Tree, uh, a female elf, or Beromar, a human male. Um, yeah. It's interesting, but uh, when I was younger playing uh, Dungeon Dragon, like in my friend's group, uh, the board was not really a class that people tend to play. True. Uh, mm. Compared especially to other class that you had, but th through all the times, like, there's been many change and iteration on the class, and has now become like such a popular class to play. Uh, really fun really fun now definitely and has become uh, kind of a like a, an emblem to dungeon yeah. dragon as much as a red dragon now uh, absolutely every party uh, nowadays has a, a bard uh, and we've also seen a lot of uh, bard love uh, into other content that dungeon and dragon produce like the movie for example yeah so we have an undead wizard we have a troubadour do we have a new map absolutely uh we're hey super proud to have a full chapter for the anniversary indoor and shocking no one uh, the map is a dungeon. Ah, um, called it. Absolutely. So in the uh, indoor, Borgo let's go, realm, baby. We have a new map with a new building. Uh, so there is Main a top building? part set in the marvelous new lighting of the Borgo realm, um, and you can find this uh, isolated tower. Oh, it's Borgo. In the middle. You can go inside and go into a, an extensive dungeon underground, uh, packed with surprises and Easter egg uh, related to Dungeon and Dragons. Yes, I um, the goal with this map is that we've imagined that Vecna, knowing about different realms and plane, uh, now trapped into the realm of the entity, would find a place to make his own, to make his home, his lair, um, and so that he can study where he is, the world, the entity, and potentially find a way to escape, maybe. Maybe not. Um, we are also introducing a new gameplay mechanic in this map called Passage. Uh, so these are basically doors, magical doors, which you can use to teleport from one area to the map to the next. And we think it's going to add a new interesting what? spice to chases. 
What? The Teleporters? Map, the Easter egg. Uh, it's super fun. Like, if you're a fan of Dungeon and Dragon, uh, just exploring, you're going to be thrilled to see all uh, the small and the big one. Uh, on that. the gameplay side now for Vecna. So the way we tackle oh or boy. approach the, uh, the the killer this time, interestingly, it comes from a game. So he has the a game mechanic that are pre existent. So we look at all like stats block and, and try to come up with like the best spell that could be translated into game mechanic for for us, and also make sure that the, these will be like thrilling and exciting to use. But then, uh, so Divini is a spellcaster, a very powerful one. So the goal was to make him uh, feel as such uh, palette. in our game. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, magic, it's something that we have never really tackled. Not not that way before. Uh, something we try to uh, stay away from. Really like bad our or powers really broken. are really visceral or like grounded as much as possible. Uh, it's something that uh, do you want to talk about a bit? Magic? Please. Yeah, yes, please. I hope uh, some of uh, our team colleagues are laughing right now. They're. Uh, I kind of have a, a bad rep internally about uh, magic. Uh, it's uh, almost a taboo word that we can't use. Uh, but now making a dead uh, a D and D chapter uh, f for sure, we had to embrace magic. And I of kind course, of agree, there is. Jay. He's a also space well for magic spoken. In war games, but it has to be uh, taken with the right tone. So in this case, we're talking necromancy, blood magic, m magic of the dead. Um, Don't and there's raise a touch AI. of realism uh, and raise visceralness AI. that we wanted to add to to magic raise uh, versus something more flashy me, like a magic projectile or a fireball, for example. There's also something quite interesting out of Dungeon and Dragons, and these are the utility spells. Um, they're spells that are not used to kill or damage, but they're used in very creative ways. And we wanted to uh, highlight that with the Lich, with Vecna. Uh, so that was our approach. Now, do you want to talk to us about the spell that we actually chosen? Sure. So you have access to four different type of spell. Uh, pretty much at any, any time, they have their own individual uh, cooldown. Uh, but so the first one is called Fly, a very popular, uh, well-known Dungeon and Dragon spell in 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 our game. It Why? lifts up Excuse the me? killer, and uh, you're pushed forward. Uh, obviously faster so it's really like the traversal aspect of the power uh it lasts for a short amount of time and uh it, it's gonna also end if you vault uh, a pallet or a vault location and uh this is really useful to uh get uh closer to survivor right. and uh get to the next gen as soon as possible the next one is called flight of the dam which is it's not really a, a Dungeon Dragon spell. It's more connected to uh, Vecna. It's an actu actually an ability that he has. Uh, right. What it does is that it casts for a uh, fire. Artist. Sorry, different, Artist uh, and nurse. Individual uh, projectile. And then it shoots them in oh, a cone uh, radius effect in front of him. Uh, these projectiles pass through obstacles. They don't go very far, but if they hit the survivor, they get damaged instantly. Um, it might sound uh, very powerful and easy to use, but it's not the case. Uh, Survivor have a lot of counter, but the spell can also be used to zone uh, in, in, in this aspect. So you can also go for the, the basic M1 attack during that time. Uh, the third spell is called um, Dispelling Sphere, which is actually it's a combination of different uh, existing Dungeon and Dragon spell. We just felt it was more compelling to combine them into one spell. Uh, so what it does, you cast a large sphere in front of you, and that sphere moves slowly throughout the level. Survivors do not see that sphere, mm. and uh, if they get uh, in contact with that sphere, they get revealed for a few seconds by Killer Instinct, and also have their magic items disabled for a minute. Mm. Uh, and the last but <laughs> not least artists. spell is Mage Hand, uh, very well known. Uh, Dungeon and Dragon spell. What it does in the by daylight, you as the killer, you can tag up a nearby pallet. Uh, and if the pallet that is upward, it, it up. blocks the pallet for a few seconds. Uh, cannot be interacted by survivor. And if it's downward, it's lifted up for you, so you can uh, fully pass without <laughs> any uh, Wait, that's, obstacles. That's kind of uh, dope. So the idea with this killer, he has a lot of tools and tricks uh, in his bag, and it's really about managing all the four spells, the cooldown, and but that animation to, was sick, though. Uh, activate them at the right moment. Uh, so that's really how you're going to improve uh, as a killer, is learning how to use them at the right time and uh, be efficient with them. So lots of strategic and tactical um, uh, choices here. Correct. So you've mentioned very quickly 
uh, during um, the dispel oh. sphere. Weird. The magical item. Did I? Yeah. What's what's that? Okay. Did uh, by so accident. this is the new toy for Survivor. Uh, it's it's called magic items, but keep in mind it's not an actual items uh, that uh, they use. Pressed. So this time, if you face Vecna, uh, you're gonna have a survivor gonna have a seven different chests that's gonna spawn throughout huh? the level. Uh, survivor go interact with those chests, and while during the opening of the chest, there's gonna be a d20 dice roll. Yes, it's an and dragon. <laughs> we couldn't do without the dice roll. Bruh. So <laughs> this <laughs> dice roll will determine the content of the chest. So okay. if survivor roll from uh, one, uh, from two to four, they get a basic. Uh, Going on your Twitch uh, channel. Dead by daylight brown you mean item. Uh, so better than nothing. Yeah, well, maybe that brown med kit might save your life. I don't know, uh, but. The fun part is when you roll from 5 to 19, that's when you get the magic items. And the way it works is that each survivor has an equipment slot, a two equipment slot. They have the bracers and the boots. Uh, so there's two types of magic items, and each magic item is going to be randomly linked, uh, the first time you open the chest, to Vec uh, Vec one of the four Vecna spells. And uh, so once they are equipped, uh, each time the killer will cast the spell that is linked to one of your magic items, you're going to gain a passive bonus uh, to help out, uh, uh, kind of uh, avoid the spell or uh, help you out against Vecna in general. Weird. So, uh, for to be more precise, so if you have bracers against the uh, fly spell, you're gonna see Vecna's aura during the traveling that while well, he used the, the the spell. If you have uh, a boots, for example, against the uh, flight of the dam, you see the aura of the projectile very useful because the projectile goes through collision, and the best way to use that spell is through walls. Uh, if you have magic items against the dispelling sphere, survivors see the sphere, so they can uh, juke and around, uh, go around the the sphere as much as and they can. And if you have a counter against the mage hand, you see the aura of the hand on the pallet and also gain a little um, uh, aced uh, effect. So that helps you out uh, around the, the loop. Okay. Are they sure yeah. this killer is so going to work? So it's really properly? important to uh, search those chests. Use? Uh, yeah, correct. Because uh, the way that we, we tackled this, the, uh, like the, the balance in this case is that we made sure that the the magic items do not trunker the killer's power. It's it's made or balanced uh, to face survivor who have them equipped. So if you don't get those, uh, definitely the killer might I mean, feel a bit oppressive. So it's really up to survivor. They to did get a to lot with this killer. And uh, equip them as yeah, soon as like possible. Right. There's a lot clear, going on here. You can also equip a normal item with that. So you can have your flashlight, bracer, and boots. Correct. It's oh. a very different uh, okay. slot. So everybody, oh, I'm going in full a lot of numbers here on yes. the dice, but you've not ah. mentioned the critical fail one and critical success on the oh. twenty. For people that uh, don't play D and D, these are like uh, events, the so best event happen? that can happen in Dungeons and Dragons when you get that critical fail or that critical success. So what happens in Dead by Daylight when that happens? Yes, so we have critical roll in the game. You should roll a one, uh, you get. Sorry, a big nothing. Wow. Although I've heard sometimes people uh, get a green key. Oh, I guess that, that's lucky that's you. Better, yeah. hey, uh, yo. But I know what uh, you get if you roll a 20. So anyone who's familiar with Vecna yeah, there's in a lot the lore going. of uh, Dungeon & Dragon, the there are two uh, very specific artifacts that exist that is called the Eye of Vecna and the Anne of Vecna, and yeah. we introduce them in our game. So you roll a 20, you get one of the two. You never know. Uh, but uh, these works more like a normal item, so you have to pick them up and use them once. It's called a tune, so you merge with the items, uh, and then you unlock a very powerful ability up to like perk level. Uh, okay. Yes, it's very strong. Uh, I guess you want to know? Well, please do, do say. Okay, sure. So if you attune with the eye of Vecna, uh, they use with lockers. So if you fast exit a locker, you're going to be unseen, unheard by the killer uh, for 15 seconds. And on top of that, you gain a haste boost effect. And if you attune with the end of Vecna, you fast enter a locker and you're going to be uh, teleported further down uh, for the locker. Wow. So uh, very oh, that powerful. That would be busted. Uh, <laughs> in chase, you jump in the locker and you're sound gone. super uh, strong, uh, yeah. said like that, but <laughs> they come with a cost. So to use them, you have to be full health. And once you use them, you instantly lose a health state. Boring. Uh, and also, Not at interesting. the end of the effect, you get revealed by counter instinct. Boring. So be very mindful the way you, you use them. Just made because it we've OP. seen very, a lot of situations where it backfires at the, the, the survivor. 
and the, the killer uh, has uh, definitely a spell to help him out, get back at the, at the survivor, right. and get the down. So it's very on brand with what a cursed item should be. Indeed. So thank you so much, uh, Janik. Um, as you can see, there's uh, a lot of stuff uh, coming with uh, Vecna, um, and we had no time today to talk about anything more about uh, the, the killer perks or the survivor. But I have to say very quickly uh, that uh, the survivor perk will allow you to create illusions, uh, to perform on the loot. You can even perform with uh, other survivors to do the full melody. There's also a dice roll mechanic uh, for one of the, per the perk. Uh, so if you want more information after the show, uh, you can go on our website, deadbydaylight.com, and get all of the details uh, you need. Uh, merci encore, Janik, for all the information. And uh, thank you so much to all of you. Happy anniversary. And I'll be passing it back to Eric and Dork. <laughs> Dice roll on these killers. Huh. Seems interesting. There's, a, there's like a lot, of, a lot going on with like the powers, the power in general. The killer has like four utility powers, they all do different things, and as the survivors you can loot a chest to maybe get an item to help you against that. I don't know. Kind of weird. Too distracted? Yeah, it's way too early for all that. For me. Yeah, by the way, I picked up some popcorn. Got some popcorn, 50 cal bags. Um, they're kind of expensive, but maybe with pink Himalayan salt. Dude. Goated snack. Goated oh snack. Oh my god. Dungeons Truly. and Dragons in Dead by Daylight. You are a pretty frequent DM yourself, right? Yes, I do DM on occasion. Forever player, as <laughs> uh, they said in the interview. Uh, well, no, forever DM. Yeah. Uh, never a player. <laughs> Please make me a player. You must be so psyched. So psyched. I'm so psyched. I'm so excited. I just cannot wait so to good. see what we have in store and to go against Vecna. Hopefully so people good. have noticed your, your dice yeah, uh, my, necklace. My nice D4. I got, okay. <laughs> um, but yes, just like Dave said, don't forget to head over to deadbydaylight.com right after the show for the full breakdown on Vecna Dude, and all of his powers. I don't have ADHD um, and I barely call all of that. perks that we've got that. for him and our bard coming into the fall. And also, don't forget to ask questions in the chat when you're not spamming nonsense garbage. Uh, ask real questions, and we'll answer them later in about? the Q and A. You don't need to say claim. Please stop saying claim. You're not claiming anything by saying claim. <laughs> <Just> stop. <laughs> But we appreciate your enthusiasm. Um, but uh, next we're going to be, um, well, I'm going to be joined by Dave Richard back on the couch for him to walk us through the ever-expanding world of Dead by Daylight. Yeah, you, you just caused half the chat to say claim. Lesson, not a day. Hey, I'm over here now. Uh, so I'm super excited for this part of the stream because not only do we get to talk about two upcoming projects in, within the world of Dead by Daylight, that being Supermassive's The Casting of Frank Stone and an unnamed multiplayer PvE game by Midwinter, but we get to do it all with Dave Rashad. So, Dave, can this you where I go make a snack. why we chose these games to be the right games for us to expand the world of Dead by Daylight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of stuff um, going into that choice, for sure. Uh, so, first of all, we are super um, Yeah, the new update should be pretty massive. The community already there, playing Dead Killer by Daylight. has a lot of powers. Mm -hmm. So, of course, we listen to what they want to see, what they want to play. Um, so, that comes into the recipe of the choice we're going to make. Um, we also want to make sure that we will create something new to experience, something that's completely out of what we are used to in Dead by Daylight. Mm -hmm. So that comes into the genre we want to create. Um, also, we want to interest new players into the world of Dead by Daylight. Um, some people that never heard of Dead by Daylight, but also some uh, viewers that are interested about the world of DVD, but that don't play DVD because maybe it's not their style of game. So we want also these players to be with us and experience the world of Dead by Daylight. And just like you were saying, with people being interested in the world of Dead by Daylight, as the creative director, why do you think there's so much interest in this and in the lore of a multiplayer game that's based in action? 
Well, it, it's been very important uh, for us since day one when we started working on this project. Taco um, Bell, uh, Taco the, Bell, the story and Taco the narrative Bell, around Taco everything Bell. We, we create. We want to make sure that uh, every little component in DBD has a, has a story and a reason to live in the universe. We take great care into Stop talking that. and show us so, stuff. Um, you know, there's a lot of <laughs> mysteries. Not showing mysteries, Vecna gameplay is a huge L. Narrative, uh, First time shatter. I think are super interesting and players yeah, she's really hyped. She likes more. DVD, you can tell. Um, so these games will allow us to discover these these elements that we've seeded in the past. No, it's a male and you know, female. Like every killer and every a survivor female and, that by the uh, could add like a female elf movie, bard and then a male gameplay. bard. Yeah, they've got so much lore. It's really amazing human. to just dive into. And speaking of lore, I mean, this is something <laughs> we want to food. expand on with the World of Dead by Daylight. Bell, Bell. So we're doing that in one of our upcoming games, The Casting of Frank Stone. So can you tell us a bit more about that? Uh, right. I, I, I can tell you a little bit. I'll just um, uh, yes. <laughs> so, uh, of course, there's uh, different type of stories in games, right? There's, uh, there's games that have a static narrative that mm -hmm. you experience. And that's great. Uh, there's also games that the narrative is is made very organically by the players, like DBD is a good example of that. Um, the casting of Frank Stone is somewhere in between, right? It's a, it's a game where there is uh, multiple narrative and based on the player choice uh, and, you know, uh, different things will happen. And, and um, based on their choice, different endings and different branching in the story will happen. Um, so the casting of Frank Stone is very interesting for us because it brings the origin uh, of a killer and potentially survivors, um, and the players are able to play that um, for the first time. You know, some things that we are used to see as a lore or a bio mm -hmm. or a tome entry in DVD now will be playable. It up it's still in the Entities universe. It's still very much part of the world of DVD, but it's going to be out of the trials. So that's going to be an interesting uh, take on our universe. Okay, so w we know that the casting Frank Stone is still in that that realm. But what about oh, our other be, projects? It'll probably just be um, one survivor with the skin. Yeah, multiplayer PVE game. Is that also going to be taking place in the entity's realm? Absolutely. So uh, it it is in the world of DBD. It is in the entity. And one one cool thing about the entity is that uh, we know very little about exactly what it is. But we do know that it's a living universe. It is, uh, it is huge, and we can't really comprehend everything that's happening within it. So we know that DBD trials are a way for the entity to feed. Oh. Um, it's a very kind of organic process. Uh, so we can imagine that there are other parts in the entity that serves other purposes. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly what we want to explore. Uh, so that allows us to create new narrative, new ways to experience a game, new way, new you know gameplay opportunity, uh, new set of rules. So these are things that we talked about in the past um, and that we always wanted to uh, explore. So that's exactly what we want to do with with this uh, new untitled game. So in a way, the world of DVD that we've created is like um, a, a book with infinite pages. We can add new stories to it forever, <laughs> hopefully. Just keep on reading. Not the cousin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you did talk about that. And, like, is there any gameplay that we'll be able to see? Uh, that we'll be able to see. Well, yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. Well, thank you, Dave, for talking us through that. But now I want to see the gameplay. Let's yeah, see the let's gameplay. Go. What in the AI? Huh. Never mind. It's life. Hey everyone, I'm Audrey, lead producer at Midwinter Entertainment. Last year, we gave you a very small glimpse of a project we started working on set in the Dead by Daylight universe. I'm happy to say that we have more to share with you on this game codenamed Project T. Instead of showing you a close to final game with some polished gameplay, we wanted to let you in on the development process. Right now, Project T is a work in progress, more than a fully fledged game. Our goal is to craft an experience with all of you and create something that you would be eager to play. Let's hear more about Project T with our creative director. Hey, everyone. First, I want to say what an honor it is to be working in the Dead by Daylight They named it universe. after him. We love DVD's multiplayer thrills, and its dark, mature setting brings just the right kind of tension and danger for a game like this. In Project T, you play as trespassers, rough-and-tumble characters who have been whisked away from their realities and trapped within the entity's realm. 
There, in a vast region called the Backwater, they discover they must work together if they're to have any chance of survival. And of course, they're not alone. The Backwater is home to horrific monstrosities known as the Thrall. These terrors come in many forms and have different deadly abilities. Their origins and nature are unclear, but they certainly don't take kindly to trespassers within their domain. To achieve your objectives, you'll have to battle the Thrall with every weapon at your disposal. The world of Project T is called the Backwater. It's a unique place, another twisted realm within the entity's grasp. You'll be eager to explore this familiar yet ominous world, and it'll definitely give you the creeps. To add even more tension to your experience, we're building the Backwater as an ever-changing landscape, which offers a lot of possibilities gameplay-wise. To navigate the Backwater, we're thinking of adding trucks in the game. Since it's a pretty big area, you would need a way to go from one point to another while escaping the hordes of Thrall. But there could be other uses for the truck, that's something we're thinking about, and we'd love to see what kind of ideas you might have. As DVD fans, we're having a lot of fun creating this new experience as part of the Dead by Daylight universe. DVD is all about horror, and we want to make sure we're crafting something that horror fans will appreciate, from the different biomes of the Backwater to the look of the Thrall. Project T is still in early development, but that doesn't mean you'll have to wait another year to get more news. We're looking to get your opinions and share information, so we're creating an a alien platform laptop. called the Insider Program. This is a place where all the players excited about this new take on the DVD universe can gather and be active participants in the development of the project. As an insider, you'll not only get exclusive information, but also in-game rewards and even the chance to join our closed play tests and give us your feedback. Join us to help shape an experience you'd like to play and make Project T the best that it can be. See you soon. Wait, so this isn't the, the Frank Stone thing? I'm so confused. I they were talking about the Frank Stone game. Cedar Hills is not exactly a noted hotbed of criminal activity. So this is? What is that? Oh, okay. That's not entirely true. There was that whole serial killer Were we not thing? supposed to see Project Why do you team? hate Cedar Hill so much? I'm so it used confused. to be like town mascot. They Ladies and up. gentlemen, I present the mill. You spend enough time in my line of work, you realize every place has got its demons. Thing that belongs to the boy you're looking for. You can't shoot him. <laughs> that was a in different here. game. This oh. is a condemned steel mill, Mr. Rivera. I suggest huh? you immediately vacate the premises. And you do not, under any circumstances, sit one foot back here in the Cedar Steel Mill. Ever. Such a joy to see young people <laughs> so passionate about the year. arts. <laughs> They do it multiple times. All right. <gasps> Either of you heard of murder mail? No! No! There was a whole string of disappearances. Kidnappings, really. Murders. So what was this guy's name? Yeah, I think they teased a game that they weren't supposed to tease. I don't think the police ever found this place. That thing Whoever said. did this might still be here. We can't stay, okay? We gotta go. I just, I just trying to figure it all out. That's Huntress's and mask. Cut. Huh? When you make dangerous cinnamon, you walk a dangerous line. Oh my god, that was such a cool trailer. Right? Some chills there. Did I see Frank a hunting Stone. mask? Bring it, God. Bring it. it. Uh, the, I, I, Murder Mill? Does that Murder seems mail? familiar? Fans might know that one. Uh, <laughs> super cool. Uh, I, I can't really cool tell. The way that the, the DVD ex ex universe is expanding. chat. Oh, yeah. Uh, Be spamming. I want to mention Project T. You saw a mention of the Insider Program. So that's our team. Is, is uh there waiting for you on discord uh so you can join the uh, insider program to get up-to-date information on project t and get involved in it and be part of the game's development it's really 
the idea there is we're making the game with the community. <laughs> um, so it's Bro. getting on the ground floor now. Guys, don't yeah. nerf all gen defense team, perks. Like Even with Eric them, said, we are the gens fly too to fast. New level with making the game with you three, instead of just talents, so. making it by ourselves. Um, so if you love Dead by Daylight and you want to help with this new session-based yeah, multiplayer games. PvE game and bring it to life, sign up for the Insider Program so that you can be in the know and get next steps. Um, you also want to make sure you wish list it on Steam because that really helps us. Yes. And so Project T is quite a ways off because, like I said, we actually want to make it with our players. <laughs> um, but the casting of Frank Stone is right on the horizon. So super massive, as uh, hopefully folks know in Come the on. chat. They're just an amazing developer of, of single-player narrative horror games. And now we're bringing Dead by Daylight uh, into that genre. And it's just so cool to finally be there. Uh, and it looks super terrifying. It looks super, super crisp and polished and awesome. I can't <laughs> wait. So uh, as you mentioned, wish lists do help a lot. So if you would do us a kindness, kindly uh, give us a wish list, we would uh, greatly appreciate it. Yes. And speaking of Dead by Daylight, um, the PTB, I know a lot of you are itching to get into that. Um, that will be at 1 p.m. as a reminder today instead of 12 p.m. So uh, be ready to download that so you can go ahead and hop in and 40 test minutes. Out chapter. Oh, I can't wait to see people's reactions to all the things that are Oh, thrown yeah. <laughs> I cannot wait, especially for the locker one. I'm so excited for Ooh. that one. But um, as we said, this is, you know, we're getting pretty close to our live segment where it's going to be the uh, live Q&A. Um, so we'll have Justin, uh, different Justin from Eric's Justin, come <laughs> out to talk about this year's Twisted Masquerade in-game anniversary event. Let's go. What are we doing? Are the cakes gonna work? Back again. This time I'm joined by Justin Banks, our senior product manager. Justin, how are you? I'm doing great. Happy to be back. Yes, welcome back to the anniversary show. Uh, and what would an anniversary be without the Twisted Masquerade, right? So the Twisted Masquerade is back. It happens every year during our, our anniversary in game. And Justin's here to talk about it. So, what have you cooked up this year? So this year, we've got some amazing stuff. Honestly, I think it's our best anniversary event yet. But before we get to it, we have what we call Before the Masquerade. So that is going to be something that actually starts right after this stream. So for everyone who's watching, once this is over, go play. <laughs> and we've got lots of really cool oh. stuff to, as a big thank you to all of the players. Uh, it's really stuff from all of DBD's history, and it includes a lot of presents. I love presents. I know you love presents. I like cake. Our community probably loves presents too. I think details. So. so the details about said presents. We've got lots of login rewards, so lots of currencies for players to earn just by logging in you know, whichever day throughout all of this. We've also got two recolored outfits, one for Meg and one for the Huntress, that players can earn through each week. Give it so up, each Stu. week you'll be able to earn a different piece of this, so if you log in just once each of these initial three weeks, you'll get the full outfits which I think is a really cool way to get your hands on some cool outfits. Now, each of these initial three weeks is going to focus on a different period of DBD's history, so a different collection of years. What that means is that we're going to have map boosts and outfit sales of character out outfits that were released during those years. So we really want to take you through this history with, with us. We want to, to celebrate the history of DBD. That's really cool. Then the cool stuff that I think everyone's really going to dig is we have some currency boosts, a different one for each week during Before the Masquerade. So for the first week, we have a oh. blood feast. So three times the blood oh, points. Christ. During week two, we are going to have... It starts tomorrow? Three times the rift fragments. It starts today? To progress towards the rift. This is a very good chance to do it. Then during week three, we've got three times the XP. So Wait, that's today? To the rift, three times so blood good, points? This is a really good chance Jesus to earn some Christ. iridescent shards. Damn. And then after D&D &D releases, the last week and a half, we'll be doing double XP and double blood points, right? Well, we're Good job, behavior. <laughs> Good job. So everyone can play the new chapter. I'm proud of you. They can get hyped for the masquerade. They can nab some of the older anniversary charms as well. They actually aligned true? all these exactly. bonuses. So we want to give people a chance I'd say May 21st. to have them during previous years. No, May you know, 14th to, to the build up May 21st to the by earning, was the know, first week. Really cool masquerade crows or Which things Which is like triple that. BP. Awesome. So it should okay, start so today. What about the event itself? So the event itself... Now that we've tackled before the masquerade, the big new thing that is coming for this year's Twisted Masquerade is the reveal of the host of the masquerade, Trix herself. 
So Ooh. players might have seen her hinted at during previous she anniversary hot? events or during out in outfit descriptions referenced as the she hot? designer. Can I play Zildrix. her? So she's finally making her appearance. And <laughs> Mother? All of the event, we want to make it very clear, like this is her party. She's everywhere. She's the entity's biggest fan, celebrating holding this party in its honor. And she's not a playable character, so we want to make that very clear. She is there pushing everybody to engage and celebrate. Dude, DBD players are I so horny. That. So does this mean we're going to see a lot more of her in the Twisted Masquerade? Absolutely. So we have a lot of the UI that is themed. You might have seen some last year. So we've done a lot of updating for that. We've got Father Campbell's Chapel coming back with the whole party taking place inside. Some updated content in there to show that the party is progressing or dying slightly. <laughs> might find some corpses. <laughs> In addition to all that stuff really permeating the game, we've got the lobby, the loading screens. She's going to appear in Trials. You will hear her laughing at you or cheering you on around the exit gates. There's really voice lines that's going to appear huh. everywhere, really accentuating the gameplay. It's going to be amazing. Like We, we loved hearing all of the voice lines that we have had recorded for this. With all that stuff, like we've got a lot of really cool gameplay that I'm going to talk about in, in just a second. But one thing I wanted to mention is that all of our event gameplay now is going to take place within a separate event queue. That's so, so weird. So if you want some of the, the normal DBD like in the core mode, you can have that. But if you want the event stuff, go over to the really cool that event queue. That feels like not DBD, though. Twisted Masquerade. And I have to say as well, if you go to the core mode, it's still going to have a lot of the decorations. So you get the vibe with the core experience. And that's a really good <clears throat> quality of life improvement over last year, right? Like Is it? Giving players that option to choose. You know, if they want to just do classic Dead by Daylight, they can with some extra flair on it. Mm -hmm. Or they can choose the, uh, the event queue. That's a nice, nice improvement. So uh, you mentioned it. So what are some of the gameplay changes that are coming with Trix? So Trix is bringing what we call her bag of tricks to the party. She wants to spice things up. She wants everyone to have a lot of fun. So what we've got is that as a match progresses... One in yeah, a series of it's abilities, a different mode. Sorry, sorry, a, a, one of the tricks is going to be played on our players. And these are going to be things like giving everybody haste, giving people undetectable, spawning anniversary special chests or totems, some really cool stuff that's going to spice it up. And this is going to happen um, whenever two points are accumulated during a match. So at first, I'd say one tricks actually takes place at the match start. Following that, whenever two points are accumulated from you know doing a gen first hook things like that each which each gives one point that is then going to trigger another tricks to maximum of five during a match so like we want to really keep things interesting and when a tricks is actually activated you're going to see tricks herself appear alongside or take the spot of one of the dancing marionettes she's going to even deliver a line that hints at what has been played so if you're not paying attention you know, she's going to give you this really cool audio cue that's awesome. And so in addition to all of that, I think we're also doing some sort of update for the invitation mechanic. Yeah, absolutely. So the invitations last year, we had players run around, gather those, and you could either spend it to use an ability while inside a chase or escape with it to help you earn a mask. This year, there's no need to escape with it to earn a mask. That's a different thing. And we've even added outside of chase abilities to the invitation. So if you're someone who doesn't necessarily want to always be chased by a killer or wants to have a more diverse use for it, we've added that. So survivors can now go into quiet mode, so making a lot less noise, and can even do things like quickly enter a locker without alerting the killer. It, it, it's super useful to get out of that chase right away. That's, That's fantastic. Like a common um, or if they're them. nearby and you don't want to alert them. They really like quick for and killers, quiet. killers, they can now use an invitation to immediately send a downed survivor to a nearby hook. And as I can say from playtests, it's really fun. I think the community is going to love that. Can't wait for them to play. But uh, also, uh, I think there's challenges we've added so you can earn masks, right? Yeah, exactly. So this year, all, earning all of the masks is going to be related to engaging with event challenges and earning event currency. So all of them are going to be earned like this. That's going to be how you earn most of the rewards. Um, and past masks and outfits that were earnable or in the store last year are also coming back. So if someone was not able to get those during previous years, those are all now going to be available inside the store for the duration of the event. Okay. And I have to say that we have also a licensed guest showing a mask this year, a Mr. Detective Tap. 
Amazing. Amazing. That's so cool. Uh, look at those cool. masks. Those are fantastic. There they are. Heck yes. Hey, Dr. Fantastic. Adam. Fantastic. Good Lord. David. Um, so Dalita. it wouldn't be a party without lots of rewards. What can you tell us about the event tome? So we've got a few staples that are coming back that we've done and seen huge success with in the past for the event tome. One is the community challenges. So we know people love to play together to, towards earning things. So we've got a lot of those. So if people engage with the event, work towards oh, sable, targets, nope. hit their own milestones, you know, I think they're going to earn some really pretty cool stuff. Also in the event tome is some really interesting lore about the Observer discovering Trix's world. So if you want to know a little bit more about her, you know, play those challenges, earn that lore. Then we've got some really cool stuff. I have to say the Twisted Masquerade is one of our favorite collections to work on every single year. As soon as the art team's concepts hit the table, or... I guess the monitor screen these days. <laughs> um, we're like enamored with them. Like, we, we love working on this collection. So this year, we've got two new 100% earnable outfits that you can earn through the event. We have one for Bill Overbeck, another yes. licensed guest making his oh. appearance in the Masquerade. Oh. And one BTB, for like half an hour. Who is Easy. maybe trying to blend in a little bit at the party. <laughs> Successfully. <laughs> in addition to all that really She looks cool so stuff, pretty. We've got some tricks themed charms and player cards Good that smash. you can earn. Now, obviously with no, Caps gee, money Mask there making an appearance as a reward, there's someone who accompanies him. So if people check out the in-game store during the Twisted Mask raid, they're 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 getting they can find a really cool event-themed outfit for the pig. Really? Yeah, there we it are is. Huge fans of this. I mean, it's oh. it's got so many touches from the Saw franchise in there. I think it, cool. it's amazing. Pig fans were on the edge of their seats hoping hoping you'd say that. Uh, amazing. Uh, so we've covered a lot. Are there any last presents for the players that we haven't mentioned? So there's a lot already, <laughs> but we've got more. So the same as previous years, we're giving out lots of daily rewards to players. So there's going to be lots of currencies, like more blood points, more rift fragments, more iridescent shards. We're going to have a huge login calendar throughout the entire event. People are going to be earning stuff no matter what they do. And for the first time, that no matter when the player logs in, we're going to give them enough event currency to get a single reward from the event. Nice. So as soon as you log in, we want to get you started and start enjoying the party. I love that. Players are going to love that. Thank you, Justin, for your time and all that detail. So much detail. I hope <laughs> people are psyched. Um, <clears throat> just as a, as a note... The event in game starts. I kind June of agree. 13th, I think at this point, but the before the master event be a BP actually starts cap. now, right after the show million. Uh, today. Um, and there is one last thing that we have not mentioned. It's all part of Triple this blood points wrapper of celebration, and it actually ties back to Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, does it? Yeah. The boosted maps so look good too. Very, very excited to say that uh, we will be putting some. Dungeons and Dragons Dead by Daylight Dice. That's a lot of Ds. <laughs> oh! Uh, up for sale in the merch store. Uh, you can pre-order it right now. It's not available. You can't get it right away, but you can get your pre-order in right away. That's kind of cool. If you pre-order the next 48 hours, you get a discount. Super psyched about this. There's that? tons of Dungeons and Dragons fans. I don't really play D&D, sure but there are dice are cool. As well, so There's why not merch put store. them together with a cool new pair of, uh, set of dice? Um, and that is all we have. Unfortunately, Justin, you're done. Thank you for your time. I was honestly always happy to be here. So we're going to toss it now to Dork for our live Q&A. and is bring Dork. It home. Take it away, Dork. Who's Dork? What's before the masquerade? So this first week, Jay, is going to be triple blood points. Wait, where's the dice, dude? I don't see him. I see socks. All right. Well, I've been like teleporting all around today. <laughs> now I'm over here. Uh, so we've covered so much content today. We've been talking about website. gameplay updates to Dead by Daylight, Deadline. the 2v8 mode, the new titles, uh, the Dungeons <sighs> and Dragons chapter. And obviously with all of this content comes loads of questions, which we will be taking the time to answer for you. I say we because it's me, Dave Richard and Justin Brown. So let's go ahead and get started. Get so for Dave. Uh, question one. In the Dungeons & Dragons segment, you mentioned two bards and one. What does that mean? Are we getting two unique survivors? No. So there is one survivor, uh, same perks, um, but there is a different customization system around this character. So it's, uh, it's similar to what we've done with the Legion. So okay. instead of having like normal head, torso, 
uh, legs parts. Uh, for the bard, we have head and torso in one piece, the legs in another piece, and the accessories. And so changing the head torso piece, you can modify which character you want to be. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so question two. Um, how big of an impact will the Project T Insider program actually have on the finished game? I'll actually go ahead and take this one. Um, we really want this project to meet player expectations at launch, um, so we want to make an open dev route, and this will allow us to proactively check in with you, our community, and fine-tune the game as we go. Uh, we'll be actioning insider feedback um, the whole time we're building the game, um, as your input and your insight will be highly considered throughout the entire process. I think their movement's so always off. Really. Uh, question three for Dave. Uh, will, uh, you see, and uh, will we chapter. see any existing Dead by Daylight characters chapter. in the casting of Frank Stone? Ooh, well, I, I don't want to spoil anything. I can say that uh, the game features a new cast of characters. They're, they're original. Um, it's an all-new story. But there are a ton of little things here and there to discover linking to Dead by Daylight. The fans. Okay, thank you. Now you got a little treat. Uh, all right, our next question, question four for Justin. And 2v8, you said that there will be classes for survivors, but not exactly for killers. What does this mean, and will more killers be added in the future? All right, I'll start with the easy one. Yes, of course, there will be new killers added. Each iteration we do after this first one, we strive to add a few more killers uh, as we move forward. As far as classes go, it's something that we're still really waiting for. Uh, there's a possibility we do something like a class system, but we're gonna wait until we get this iteration into your hands and work with your feedback and, and see where we take this mode. All right, thank you, Justin. Uh, question five, what is the difference between a game mode and a modifier for Justin? Okay, uh, it's just like what Matt said. A modifier is really something that takes a, a little piece of a standard trial and sort of adjusts it like uh, a darkness effect, maybe changing how fast or how many generators there are to do, uh, or random perks. A mode is something that's going to fundamentally change the way the game's played, something really big and, and all-encompassing, something like 2v8. All right, thank you. Uh, again, Justin, i uh, got a question for you, question six. Can I duo killer with my friends in 2v8? Absolutely, you can queue up with your friend. Um, up safe. You know, you can get on Discord and talk to them and, and play killer together. Okay. So I'm super excited for that. That's going to be amazing. Um, all right, our next question. Can we play two of the same killers in 2v8, Justin? Mm. Uh, no. The, Damn the easy it. The answer is no, you won't be able to play two of the same. You'll be able to mix and match uh, between the five. But two the huntresses. Two Everyone's two depressed. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine hearing both chainsaws rubbing? <laughs> like, oh, gosh. Overload. Uh, all right, question eight. Um, I didn't get my blood points from grade reset yesterday. Oh Will God. I get them back? Um, I'll go ahead and answer this one. Yes, we're working on refunding the missing blood points to players, and you should receive them within the next few days. Really sorry about that. Uh, question nine. Can achievements and trophies be earned in the 2v8 mode when it releases, Justin? The simple answer is yes. Uh, there are no specific <laughs> 2v8 quit. achievements or trophies, uh, but if you're making progress towards one that already exists, like how many generators you have to repair, progress uh, is, is still made towards those trophies. All right, thank you. Uh, question 10, um, are there plans to keep 2v8 permanent after some iterations, Justin? So this is something we're still working out. Uh, <laughs> But I can tell you for sure, in year nine... We're missing they, seven... Ca oh, because of the cap nine. issue. Uh, it's a, uh, going to be an ongoing discussion. It's going to depend sort of the engagement level, the feedback we get from you, uh, and when we feel the mode is, is fully ready before we continue those conversations. Mm -hmm. So when the mode is active, make sure you are playing it, okay? Let, do this for us. Um, so other than that, uh, what is uh, is What the Fog, couch co-op, or online co-op only? What's I'll couch co-op? Well. Uh, oh, the never is mind. online co-op only, available as soon as we find a fix for the website. Really sorry about that, but thank you so much for trying to claim the game right now. <laughs> um, all right, uh, question 12 for you, Dave. Um, is Matt Mercer voicing Vecna? Mmm, good catch. He is. We're Whoa. Super excited to have Mercer bring Vecna to life. Hey, yo. In game. It's, good. it's awesome. But that's sick. One of the kings of Dungeons and Dragons. My homies will be excited. Vecna Maybe they'll actually play Dungeons. DVD again. Oh, but we don't have any other questions. Thank you all so much for submitting your questions, no matter where you are watching from. Mm. And thank you so much, Dave and Justin. Um, regarding cross progression, just going to 
fill this in really quickly. Uh, we also want to reiterate that we can't share specific plans just yet um, as we are still finalizing the last details, but rest assured that as soon as we are clear to do so, we will, and we plan to also push out a public FAQ. So once the FAQ is posted, we'll announce it across all of our channels for your full awareness. Uh, once again, a big thanks to everyone who submitted questions, hmm. and we hope these answers were helpful, and we'll be talking more about this stuff in the next coming months. <laughs> They're um, owed two million gift rip. for our play if you're already signed up for the Dead by Daylight newsletter, oh. you'll receive 250k blood points. Big stretch. And if you are not, you can still register until May 15th to get that sweet, sweet reward. Uh, and another big thanks once again to just, uh, Justin and Dave uh, for sticking you sign around up for a to, newsletter. to answer all of these amazing questions. Sign in with an account. And since this is almost the end of our show, we don't want to forget that the PTV goes live in 22 minutes. Yeah. Um, so on, man. now we're going to have Eric and Matt here on the couch one more time. What are we going to do for 22 minutes? With one final surprise. What's the surprise, chat? Naked skins for DVD. Let's go. Bikini skins. Bikini skins. All right, this is it. This is the end. We've made it to the end of the show. Bikini it's been skins, a great show. It's been a long show, but and we thank you for sticking with us. We had so much to tell you about. Thongs so for all survivors. All. But uh, thank you so much. Um, and look who's here to join me on, on the, the couch over there, Mr. Matt Cote. Hey, Matt, bye. welcome. Thank you so I'm very much. Work. Well, nice of you to make it at the end. Yeah, sure. You I mean, I eventually got here. Yeah. Uh, well, I was a little late. I had some surprises to True. work on. It's always something. That's true. But I think all the surprises are wrapped <laughs> up for now. Uh, thank you again. Um, <laughs> yeah, you'll I know. join us on one of our upcoming streams. We're going to keep we these rolling. Class. Maybe you'll join us on one of our upcoming streams. I'd be delighted. Be fantastic. Was and that's Quinn. it. Thanks, everybody. Have a We're wonderful... We're Diablo uh, 4. Yes. I just want to say before we leave. So the people who have been with us until the very, very end, we have one last surprise for you. Uh, we like to close the show with a surprise. It's a bit of a tradition nowadays. So this summer, we are going to be welcoming yet another legendary set of characters into the fog. Really? Dumb and Dumber? <laughs> I don't think we're supposed to say that. <laughs> Featuring over... <laughs> Featured in over 30 games, an animated series, an absolutely unforgettable soundtrack, and much, much more. We hope you are as excited as we are to welcome into the fog this classic franchise. Scooby Doo? Wait, what is this? Oh, Castlevania. Right? Undreamt went to bed and he missed this. Oh, we know nothing until August? Jesus. <laughs> Pokemon! <laughs> I mean, Meg could have Misty, Dwight would be Ash. Leaks were real? Honestly, a lot of the leaks, especially from like that one YouTube video comment bullshit, were 100% accurate. So these are the powers that they talked about, right? Mage hand, conjure magical uh, hand to lift down a uh, down pallet or briefly block an upright one. Flight of the dam, send a row of five flying special entities that pass their obstacle. Injure survivors. Can't wait for that. They said there'd be a lot of counterplay. Don't know what that's going to be. Randomized loot. Yes. The spelling fear cast an invisible moving sphere reveals uh, survivors orders temporarily and disables their magic items. You can fly forward, obviously, vaulting pallets and shows. So the perks, this is true, for Vecna, for Weave Attunement, when a survivor's item becomes depleted for the first time, it drops to the ground, and any survivor within range will have their aura revealed, and when a survivor picks up an item, they become oblivious. Good perk. I mean, it probably makes sense for the D&D &D world. It's an item. Languid touch. When a survivor scares a crow inside your TR, they become exhausted. Whoa. That's kind of interesting. That's going to be annoying as hell. And then dark arrogance. You are blinded and stunned for longer, but you gain faster vault speed. Whoa. Faster vaults base, but there's a downside. 
that's kind of cool. All right, what are our what is our cute little elf chick gonna get? Mirrored illusion. When you finish repairing a generator, you press the ability button while near a chest, gen, totem, or exit gate. A static illusion of yourself will appear. Well, that's kind of sick. You can put down a little image of yourself? I wonder how real it's going to look. Bardic Inspiration. Press the ability button while near other survivors to begin a brief performance, during which you roll a d20 dice. Sure, makes sense. On one, you scream. Two to ten, skill checks grant uh, repair progress of 1%. 11 to 19, skill checks uh, grant 2%. And on a 20, skill checks grant 3%. What? And then if you miss a skill check, the ability's uh, canceled. Weird. Oh, I wonder how often this happens. Dramaturgy at home? Or you could have like a full random loot or a full random build. Still sight. After standing still for a brief duration, you'll see the auras of all generators, totems, and chests. Okay. I mean, the mirrored illusion thing seems kind of funny. Of course you have this butthole over here. Of course Vecna gets shit perks, and now the survivors have more gen progression. Lol. Which mask are your favorite? The twins one looks really sick, I ain't gonna lie. This one looks really sick. Clowns does too, honestly. Survivor, maybe David's. What'd you have for breakfast? I haven't eaten anything yet. Check out what Otz is saying. <laughs> I haven't eaten anything yet. Uh, dude, that's that's sick, dude. That's sick. Matt Mercer and Dead by Daylight. Cool. 